Okay, so we are post game talking about Sucre de Mana. And we'll break it down since it's part of the Mana collection, or excuse me, collection of Mana. Do we feel the game is worth playing? Do we think the game held up? I think this is a very interesting question and I feel it's somewhat hard to answer. I will say if I were to abbreviate it, it would probably be, is it worth playing? Yes. Is it worth beating? No. Did it hold up? Generally, no. This game's strength comes from the fact that it is an action game with potentially three players. I would say your enjoyability of the game is very much decided by how many people you're playing with. If you're playing alone, I would say it's okay to give this game a pass, to be honest. Like, we are coming from a background that I've played this game before growing up. I played this game co-op, I played this game single player, and as the years go by, I think a lot of mechanics in it did not age well at all, sadly. So it did innovate a lot of things. So for example, it's an SNES game with active combat. You swap into potentially different weapon types. Some of them are used to traverse dungeons. So for example, you have whips that can hit to poles and you whip across to go across little gaps. Um, sort of re reminiscent of the Final Fantasy Adventure game we played earlier on stream. Where the game starts to fall apart comparatively, especially if we're going to compare it to something like Final Fantasy Adventure as the predecessor, is the sense that it's kind of still quasi-turn-based. It's like an action game in disguise. So in order to stop you from spamming attacks, it has a stamina meter that needs to recover in order for you to do damage. And you're like, okay, that doesn't sound like the worst thing ever. And they try to make the combat a little more interesting in terms of, you know, advancing the gameplay with uh, Final Fantasy Adventure by allowing you to build your own charge attack. So depending on slowly grinded weapon proficiencies, you can end up unleashing a super move, which does a lot of damage. However, I think when you start to play more of the game and you start getting out of the intro, the game starts to take a nosedive real quick. So a lot of the initial bosses are definitely built to be beatable by solo weapons, like no magic. And for the most part, they're fine. You know, there's a big difficulty spike early in the game in involving a haunted house, and I won't go into more details for spoilers. Um, but beyond that, like the game isn't like super hard when it comes to bosses until it introduces the magic system. And this is where many, many, many issues come into play. You have to constantly use magic in order to level it. Leveling it is a huge determination in how much damage you do. You don't have a lot of ways of boosting magic damage outside of leveling uh, the magic. You can also technically level the character, but it barely increases damage in comparison to uh, spell leveling. And on top of that, uh, it just it just ends up becoming like a can you stunlock the boss with spells? Since most of the time, uh, in particular, the last 50 to maybe even 60% of the game, bosses just kind of have near instant spell casts. Like a lot of the early ones at least give you a bit of an animation. They put their hands together and orb starts to build. But there's not really a lot of counterplay. Magic isn't like real time damage like it would have been in like Final Fantasy Adventure where you dodge the projectile. It is guaranteed to hit you. And that is probably what leads into a lot of the flaws. When things hit you, the game goes south real fast, real quick. It is very easy, even for normal enemies, to stunlock kill you. Um, so if you are not keeping up with your armor throughout the game, you are possibly just dead outright. We saw a couple times in the game, in particular towards the end of the game, where gear gaps in defense are so extreme that we went from taking mm, maybe like a fifth or a sixth of our health per hit to literally one shot because of the how big the gap in defense was between the armors, which is super unfortunate. Uh, the game definitely expects you to hard grind basically throughout, so you need to pay money to upgrade weapons. You can't use advanced charge moves without having upgraded weapons. Then you have to spend uh, several hours potentially per character, especially if you want to teach every character every single weapon level uh, in order to do damage. And it's just not... It's just not great. It's one of those things where it would probably bother less if you play multiplayer since you can team up with somebody and you don't deal with one of the biggest, 
biggest flaws of this game where the game aged super bad in particular the ai the ai is infuriatingly terrible i think between a mixture of things where obviously it's a very early system to include like three active characters at once and being able to swap into them sounds like a lot of fun uh but ultimately what it ends up being is kind of like the babysit manager simulator where these idiots will get stuck on literally everything and some dungeons are designed specifically to irritate you because you're going to need like a sword or an axe for example to hit down recu recuperating blocks and then they'll recuperate split your party up and your ai don't know how to destroy the blocks so you have to go back and fish them out or you'll step on a switch and it'll cause them to, it'll cause the things that you cut down to respawn except your ai gets stuck and it's just a lot of management in particular when there's zigzag paths throughout the game it just it feels so bad trying to get them through there and i think the reason why it feels exceptionally bad in this game where you know you could say like okay you know they're too stupid to follow you correctly the big problem with it is that because you can swap into those characters if they get stuck they lock the screen in place and you cannot move there are so so many times about pretty much like the 70 percent of the game where you are telling them to go through anything that looks like a semi-narrow corridor and because of the enemy they'll either try to immediately attack the enemy become misaligned and then get stuck on an object or because they're retreating from an enemy because you told them to retreat instead of approach they retreat too far and then they get stuck on another path and it just becomes like such an annoying balance of swapping between them to get them to run or literally having to pause every single enemy because if you try running past them your ai don't know what you're doing if at any point you disengage run it's basically over it's a free-for-all whether the game listens to you or not which is really really infuriating and that's where i think the single player experience wanes a lot like it's already a bit of a weight fest because you can't really just keep spamming attack it'll do literally zero damage or basically nothing if you don't wait for the stamina meter to recharge but then like you're micromanaging the ai and then you're getting hit by like undodgeable spells and boss battles and the only way to really cancel that is with items i'm not sure entirely if it's a glitch or not because this game is so glitchy i would not be surprised if it was not an intended mechanic but you can use items or certain spells to negate damage but in order to do so it usually requires you to swap out of the character especially if you're being if you're the one charging up and being targeted for example um so all that effort you spent trying to charge like this slow 14 16 second no 14 a bit of exaggeration like 8 10 second long charge attack you then have to swap quickly because your other party member is about to get bodied by something you have no ability to dodge you have to go into a menu cancel it by you know spamming this item or using this one time use item or using a healing ability blah 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 and then maybe just maybe the ai will keep charging it for you or sometimes they'll just release it early and screw it up and it's just really infuriating, I would say, because you have this dependency on the AI and they are not good. Um, they will also not use spells, which is both a good and a bad thing, um, because spells in this game are very slow to go into. The game has a very infamous what I'll call ring system, where you have a series of six to eight icons where you have all your main menu, your control settings, your grid action, which is how you change the AI, your equipment, the ability to force an AI to target a specific thing, like all those exist in the ring, then you can kind of hit up or down on the D-pad to go, okay, I don't want to see this, I want to see my items, I don't want to see this, I want to see my magic. And the problem with that is that you end up pausing the game like a lot, like a lot, a lot, and it feels really weird. Like the one thing you really don't want to do in an action game is constantly pause the game, but you have to. There, there's just a certain point in the game where if you try to melee only, you are either hilariously overleveled like hilariously overleveled in order to get away with it or you're just spell spamming or constantly canceling damage in the menus and it pauses the game over and over and over it doesn't help that like you can't fix all the controls you can fix some of them in the control settings so i know i for one if i hold right and the thing rotates like you, you, you literally just picture a circle and you spin the circle in front of you. The fact I can't choose what direction it rotates, like right should make it go to the right. Like I'm turning it clockwise, but it makes it go counterclockwise. And that really annoys me and it doesn't 
I, I hate games that don't let me swap which direction things are, whether it's reverse or normal, I'll put it that way. So often I found myself struggling to get through the menus, and I don't think that's going to be entirely... Like, eventually you'll get used to them, but there's just, like, a lot of struggle with it, and when it wants you to just literally constantly menu, it does really drag down the game experience, and I feel like the game, without going into super spoiler territories, around the last three dungeons in particular, the game just has fallen apart completely. It feels like a rush job. Uh, boss mechanics are ludicrous. Casting animations are missing. Uh, bosses are often completely untargetable by melee. Uh, we saw a ludicrous boss where we were basically locked out of doing damage and almost had to reset the game because we couldn't melee the boss at all for literally more than five minutes and there was no way to get out of it other than magic. So... The game definitely lacks polish towards the last half, and I think that is an extremely fair warning that you should know before you get into this game. The last big, like literally the last 15 bosses or so are so irritating and on a completely different difficulty scale compared to the rest of the game. So if you have not been using a lot of magic prior to that point, you will probably be struggling unless you are on the full-time grind, everybody max weapon level, max healing which by the way there's not a lot of healing items you could carry it once four is not a big number of certain item types and uh with your ai potentially running into things and dying constantly it is extremely easy for them to sap your resources i think in our particular playthrough it's safe to say that even though i was accounting for one third of the party as we went through the dungeon the ai easily took 90 percent of the damage they just don't know how to walk around enemies they don't know how to interrupt attacks with their own attacks they don't know when they shouldn't approach certain things they don't know to run when i'm necessarily just trying to get by them so ooh, big big oof trying to get them to do what you need to do uh there's also a lot of hidden mechanics with the armor and some of the general items are very ambiguous as to what they do. So had I not played the game before, I would not know what the barrel does or realize the barrel is single use, given that it uh, doesn't really tell you those kinds of things. Or things like power wrist boost strength or like circlet boost intelligence. Like these are like really common things that you would think even even by that point, you should kind of be able to very quickly check your stats but because like your stats are so far removed from the equipment it's very rare you're gonna go back into the stat menu and kind of compare it because you have to like cancel out of equipment then you have to go into a different menu and then you have to kind of look through the different things you're not allowed to compare the different armors you'd have to go through that process again and again i'm not a big fan of games that try to make it overly simplified because when they do actually have other effects it's like it would probably be good to just tell the player it's one of those things where modern game design has mostly fixed that, where if you have a weapon, you see your attack go up, you see your stats go up, you see if you get any resists, you see if you have any resistances to ailments or something like that, and it's all usually kind of laid out for you, and this game does not do it. Now, granted, that's not necessarily needed to beat the game, but it just goes back to what I was talking about before, where the game is really heavily unpolished. Uh, if you just happen to have watched this review and not seen the gameplay, this game is so buggy. I'm the champion agree with me that everything bugs out in this game. We have soft locked ourselves, we have broken UI elements, we've caused weird uh, damage glitches, we've done infinite money. We basically showed off not even like the tip of the iceberg of possible glitches in this game. And there are just so, so so many glitches due to things not working as intended so it is what it is i guess with that i suppose but ultimately chat um i will say that i want to talk about additional things but they go into spoilers i will say non-spoilers music really good the soundtrack i think holds up the, the music is like one of the only things that is like held to the test of time in fact we're gonna just restart the soundtrack here where I, th I think the composer did a really good job. I think a lot of the sprite work is also pretty solid. I think it's pretty solid. I think, like, visually speaking, the game is not like an eyesore. I think a lot of the, 
the art with some of the cutscenes are actually pretty interesting. And I think like the style of the characters so far, uh, I would say also works for me. It's just a shame that the combat is just so heavily flawed, in particular with boss battles. And the AI is atrocious. So like if you play with a bunch of friends, you just go around like alternating hits. That way you take advantage of kind of like a stun lock system. That way you could do to the enemies what uh, they do to you. Then the game becomes a lot more fun. So that's why it's kind of like a weird game to just like straight up not recommend or recommend. And there's not many games that allow three player in particular for SNES. So it, it has potential. I think there are a couple weapon types that I did like. Uh, even without using their charge moves. I know I was a big fan of like things like the ja uh, not just javelin, the pole dart, which is different from the spear. And I generally stayed away from some of the melee ones. I do feel like there's several weapon types that were just kind of bad and didn't seem to really have a good reason to ever use them. Uh, Knuckle is one of them. Knuckle doesn't really seem to give you anything unique. I would have liked to have seen it if it like greatly enhanced your defense or let you like wall charging up, let you guard or something. That way you take reduced physical or something like that. Otherwise, in this game, range is king. You know, your whips, your boomerangs, your chakram equivalencies, all really solid, kind of fun to use throughout. But unfortunately, you could tell the game kind of favors very specific weapons due to the fact that it's not easy to upgrade the weapon orbs. Uh, you either have to find them in chests or bosses give them to you. So some weapons will just lag really heinously far behind compared to the others until the late game, which is really unfortunate. And I'm also not a big fan that to unlock the final weapon levels, you have to just farm RNG treasure chests at the final dungeon of the game. But if you're at the point that you can farm those, just beat the game. Just go win. You don't need them. Weapons don't literally do anything on any of the bosses. <laughs> which which is like almost spoilers, but yeah, there's really no reason to level weapons by the end of the game. Which is really unfortunate. Coffee Shim saying grind is a hidden mechanic in a lot, a lot of SNES RPGs. Yeah, unfortunately. I think they alleviate it slightly by giving you more gold in some of the later areas, so it's not as horrible to grind some of the cash totals, but I'm not a fan, Chad. I'm not a fan. So I think we covered basically everything. Um, I will say in a brief sentence, the plot and dialogue is very limited. It feels like some weird translation happened. Um, and it's not the most compelling story. So if you're looking for a very deep RPG, this is not going to be your Chrono Trigger. This is not going to be your Final Fantasy VI. This is not going to be your Final Fantasy IV. If you're looking for something more action-oriented, it's not like a true action game. And those quasi-turn-based elements where spells will just hit you and there's no active dodging element. Or enemies can just chain hit you over and over and over again. And there's literally nothing you can do if all of your party members are hit. Um, not the best. It can lead to quite a few frustrating moments. So if you're willing to play with a very janky, very glitchy game, Give it a shot, but I think it's time for spoilers, chat. I'm going to talk about my biggest pet peeve of the game, and I feel almost basically ruins the game for me and why I would basically never play this game again. Um, the final three dungeons uh, where we fought, what was it, 14 or 15 bosses back to back are really not fun. They're really not fun to do. I think this game would have benefited from having more opportunities throughout the dungeons to potentially full heal your HP and MP. Um, there's not a lot of points where you could save. So if you think about it this way, if you're not playing it on like the collection of mana, you have to beat like all four to five of those bosses in one try. Game overing makes you go all the way before you did the dungeon. So rem keep keep that in perspective, chat, of how, like how unpleasant that would have been had we not been able to be have some of the safety saves. Like, thankfully, we saved before some really atrocious things, like entering Pure Land and literally getting one touched by the enemies. That was interesting. Um, but yeah, overall, just by the end, it just became like a big babysit simulator. 
and it all culminates and the big reason why playing with the different weapons is not as fun as it seems is it culminates in the final boss if you do not grind your weapon levels on the final boss or you don't understand how the final boss's damage mechanic works by checking your weapon experience you are going to have a bad time Trying to beat that final dungeon in one go is really, really brutal. But backtracking because you beat two bosses and you're not sure how many bosses are left, to go all the way out and come all the way back is also like a giant waste of time, to be honest with you. So unfortunately, they try to follow the rule of cool on that final boss where you're trying to empower to the final level of the sword to be able to deal damage to the last boss. And wow, wow, does it feel really bad. I really hate that final boss. That might be one of my least favorite bosses of all time. I'm willing to state it, chat. I, I hate every moment of that boss fight start to finish. Like, I hated Terranigma because, like, Jank would stop mechanics from working. And I didn't like some of the difficulty spikes of Terranigma for obvious reasons. I genuinely hate the final boss of this game, the Mana Beast. I find it really stupid that you have to keep recasting the stupid Mana Sword buff over and over and over again while trying to keep your party alive, while trying to make them dodge things, while potentially canceling all the spell damage. Like again, if I didn't know from having seen this game played before in like a more professional setting, that final boss would be ultra frustrating. Could you imagine if you got to the end of the game and you didn't know how to damage cancel? how much damage we would have been taking on that final boss. Like, I don't care if you had the super armor. Like, that's crazy. You have, like, literally undodgeable attacks unless you know about, like, the, the menu mechanics and stuff like that. Stupid. Stupid, chat. I don't know why they did it. Well, I technically know why they did it. I'm disappointed in them. <laughs> this may be a better way of framing it. So, between that and the Dark Slime, where it literally grows so big that it pins all your characters against the walls of the arena, and you can't melee the boss anymore, is one of the dumbest mechanics ever. I'm not sure which boss I find more irritating to me on a game design level, but both of them are terrible and both of them are in the same dungeon. I am disappointed. Like, I really do feel those final three dungeons ruin the game. I have a lot of fun up until you get flight from Flammy. I feel like the game for the most part is decently paced and there's like merchants trickled in just the right spots where you could basically save and potentially recharge. But by the end of the game, there's, th there's no Neku in some of these dungeons. Neku's not going to bail you out in some of those other things. And, and oh boy, you could save in Pure Land. Have have fun have fun backtracking if you run out of items in that place. Or what about the entirety of the mana fortress where it's just you beat it in one shot more or less, and there's all these awful enemies that class things that will basically body you instantly. It just it's not fun towards the end of the game, unfortunately. And as I said before, there are so many glitches with the game. I tried so hard to keep it mostly glitchless. Like, obviously, I can't keep it glitch free. I think it's act. I think it is legitimately impossible to play this game without encountering a single bug, either in the UI or something else. But yeah, like, can you imagine if you had to reset every time the UI broke or every time like the colors went weird or you accidentally did something you weren't supposed to? or the camera went in a weird way, or you or you did something else with the spells, or maybe even if you consider damage canceling a glitch, maybe, maybe you consider that a glitch, but it's like, oh boy. <laughs> the game is basically unplayable. But yeah, it's just one of those things where it just, it feels really unfinished. Like they give you this big open world and like, let's count how many plot relevant places you go to. You can go to Gold City, one of the dungeons connected to a town. So may maybe you count that as two. We'll be generous. We'll say that's four. You could go to Turtle Island, which does literally nothing. There's nothing to do there at all. It's pointless. Never comes into the story, never gives you optional things. There is that one tower out in the middle of nowhere. Is that it? Are those the only places you could fly to? You could normal- Oh, Pure Land. 
And again, a lot of those places are all kind of like right next to each other. And it just kind of pads the game time because you're just like looking around the world. I guess technically if you want to include underground fortress slash mana fortress, it's there. But like they give you this big world, but the game is done. Like at least two of those are not at all plot relevant. And you can even skip the town that's associated with uh, the dungeon. Like none of those are required to visit for story reasons. We also, for like one cutscene, go to the castle in the other kingdom for like five minutes, and then that's it. We never go back there again. I guess if you want to count that, it's something to do. But it just makes the world kind of feel empty, which is disappointing. And I think without like the travel by canon guidance, it just ends up you're not really entirely sure what to do sometimes. Like, you'll find the Gem of Night occasionally, and he'll tell you where to go. And other times it's like, yeah, we're just not going to tell you where the dungeons are. You just got to figure out where they are. Hope you remember that this one character was a spy from like, what was it? North Town? No, South Town. And to go back to them after you found out a key is stolen. Good, good luck finding that out on your own if you don't know where that key goes or where the key is. That, that is also a big place where I definitely got lost. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I would say somewhere somewhere between Upperland and Underground Palace, I feel like the game's plot kind of falls through. It's like already starting to repeat bosses pretty early on. And again, I think some areas of the game are really cool. I think like thematically, the uh, first time you fight Thanatos and you fight... Uh, <laughs> was it Wallface? I think it is literally called Wall Wallface as opposed to Doom Wall. Um, I think the first time you fight it, it's actually pretty interesting, and I like the atmosphere the game gives you. But then they just kind of like literally copy the, the tiles of the dungeon and they make another dungeon out of it. And then they do that with all the bosses in the game. You fight several bosses pretty much from the 50% of the game onward that are literally just the first set of bosses that you beat earlier. There's like two unique-ish bosses, maybe, at the tail end of the game. I'm not impressed. So yeah, sadly, I, I think it's just one of those games where it, it, it's fine <clears throat> if you're like a kid growing up, you can have the nostalgia goggles on or glasses or whatever you want to call them, and you can have enjoy it for what it is. But looking back on it, treating it very seriously compared to everything else that we played on stream, including Final Fantasy Adventure, um, I just don't think it's as good. I just don't think the game held up very well, sadly due to a lot of these issues. Like, if the, if it had been, like, legitimate real-time combat, like Final Fantasy Adventure, I think a lot of my complaints would have gone away. Like, if spells weren't auto-hit on you and you actually got to dodge them, this game would have been, like, way better than what it was. And it's kind of disappointing it went that way, in a sense. Like, could you imagine instead, Secret of Mana, you just had a spell button and you could have been charging magic or charging uh, melee? to set up for like cool spells and stuff like that. Like they they could have they could have just like barely tweaked anything about the game and it would have been like a huge improvement, which is kind of a shame <clears throat> honestly speaking. Yeah, as I said before, plot very uh it exists to drive the it, it exists so that it connects some of the bosses together that, that's that's about the extent you're not really going to get anything interesting philosophically or morally or innovative when it comes to it the setting itself is okay but honestly if we were to compare this to final fantasy adventure which is on the same collection I'd rather just play Final Fantasy Adventure again, to be honest. If, if I'm playing by myself, Final Fantasy Adventure all day, I would never pick this game again solo. Playing two people, maybe I would give Secret of Mana a chance. Could be fun teaching people how to infinite magic people. <laughs> that, that can be really stupid. But anyway. Yeah, just kind of, kind of whatever, honestly. I don't think I have too much else to add. If Chan, if you want to put any of your final thoughts from what you observe from the game, feel free to do so. Feel free to spoil if you want to.
Yeah, I definitely wish the beginning... I Like, I feel like the first 25% of the game is, like, actually genuinely fun to play as intended. And then, like, the last 40% of the game, I'm like, yeah, I'm not meleeing anything ever. This sucks. Why bother? Why bother? They're either going to stun lock you with instant casts or... They're going to lock you in a position where you can't reach them, looking at you Dark Slime. Or they're going to be literally untargetable for like 90% of the boss battle, like the vampire that's only targetable when it dive kicks. So you can't even hit it when it's floating around and casting endless spells that you can't dodge. It's just one of those things where like, it's it's like so close to being cool, but they just, they just botch it right at the end. The execution, they tripped over their own feet, face planted. I kind of, I guess to give them a little bit of a prop, they tried to stop you from getting too overleveled by restricting when you can level based off of how many orbs you had or how many seeds you have to control the level of your magic. But as I said before, it just ends up being kind of tedious. I'm also really sad the thing that lets you absorb MP is so late in the game. Like it literally is like the final two hours of the game, maybe three, depending on how you play where you finally get to enjoy it, and then it's like, oh. It's over. <laughs> the, the game is over, oh. So yeah, I would have had a lot more fun playing with Javelin probably the whole time, but sadly to set up for the damage on the final boss, I couldn't keep leveling it. I guess I could have technically leveled that instead of the fists and left the fists at 80, I guess. But it would have been same kind of issues. I think overall, though, chat, as I said before, we'll probably not revisit the game. I'm not interested in doing a 13-minute speedrun of it or whatever. Because, again, this game has so many bugs. You could do, th like, like if you if you think of a way to beat the game, it this game has it. This game is, like, held together with, like, <laughs> string, maybe some gum. If, if we're being generous, it's gum. Like, it, it has everything. It has wrong warps. It has uh, save exploits. It has uh, debug menu. It is debug menu. So, like, if, for example, I think if you activate barrel and talk to an innkeeper at the same time, you enter a secret menu where you get to select the cutscene to play and you can play the end of the game. <laughs> Like, there's- this game is really broken, and some of it is, like, some of it you'll just come across playing the game normally. Like, it's very easy to softlock. We mentioned in the playthrough, for example, if two people touch a screen transition at the same time in a dungeon where it doesn't act- well, screen transition is a bit too strong of a term. If you touch something that would scroll the screen in a forced scroll, and both of you do it on the same frame, you go twice as far, and you just get stuck in a wall. It's that kind of stuff where it's like, that really sucks. <laughs> so it is hilariously easy to softlock yourself in this game in multiplayer. So even then, it's like, it's just still like a recommend with caution. If you just want to play a game and break a game, this is like a perfect game if you just want to deconstruct something and just go, I love to grind, and I'm going to beat a game that's very grindy. You can play this game. If you're like, I want to do out of bounds nonsense and clip through walls, this game has it. If you want to do cutscene exploits or save state overrides, even in the original game, not even talking about the collection version, you could do it. So have fun with it, chat. This game is like, <laughs> this thing is ultra brittle. It takes nothing to break it. I mean, we did a couple of glitches first try, no setup. Like, they are easy, chat. They are really easy to do. So, hey, if you love speedrunning it and potentially glitching the game, uh, you can look into the one controller or two, or two controller categories because there are a lot of glitches you can't do with just one controller. Some people will literally sit with two controllers, one, one on their lap, like, one on each leg on their lap, and they'll just go through and glitch the game. <laughs> Because there's, there's so many more things that you could do to break the game. So I would say from like a learning games or like baby's first glitches, this game is amazing at teaching you how buggy games can be. But yeah, it really didn't hold up. I feel anybody that like is super hardcore in defense of it 
needs to take an honest look and analysis at how ludicrously badly balanced the last half of the game is. And I will concede, I really like the early portion of the game. I think it's meant to be done, dealt with with weapons because you don't have magic. And then once magic's introduced, the game just kind of... It crumples into dust. Which is kind of unfortunate. But anyway, Chad, I don't think I have anything else to rant about when it comes about this game. So that'll be our final thoughts, which I forgot if you even addressed this as final thoughts. That's how ready I was to rant about the game chat. <laughs> just, I took like one sip of water and I'm like, I know it's coming out. It's like Terranigma style. I had a lot to say about this game compared to some of the others. But yeah, not, not a fan overall. Not going to go replay the game. I think it's an important game to go back and appreciate for all the things that it inspired, but I don't think by itself it is good enough to say, like, I like the game. Sorry, Secret Amana. You're, you're, you're going to be designated to co-op only. But anyway, chat, I'm, I'm feeling a little better after a little discussion with the game, so maybe we'll try one more game after this. But I don't think I have any final thoughts more to add to the game. I think we covered basically everything. As I said before, plot not really all that great. Uh, a lot of it is just kind of like five to eight sentences or less plot in long gaps of combat. Um, or excuse me, in, long se in between long segments of combat is how I meant to phrase that. So those looking for a story are going to be very, very disappointed. I think the girl says Dialuk every single sentence that she talks in the game outside of when you first see her. And even then, she still mentions Dialuk. So I, it would not surprise me if she said it more than 55 to 60 times in the playthrough. Because that's all she cares about throughout the entirety of the run, pretty much. But anyway, chat. We got one more game to play on the collection, so we're going to be moving into that. But let's go ahead and say goodbye to those sticking around for the final thoughts. So if you did watch to this point, I'd like to say thank you for sitting through the rant and uh, hopefully see you again in the next mana game.